Dr. Fournette, what are the criteria for liver resection and what are the outcomes uh, that we find after laparoscopic liver resection? So um, liver cancer, as you know, in the United States is over 80% and occurs in patients who have underlying cirrhosis. Worldwide, there's more hepatitis B uh, related liver cancer and a lot of those patients don't have cirrhosis. Whether or not someone has cirrhosis makes a big difference in terms of whether they're a resection candidate. Um, as I say to my patients, cirrhotic livers don't like to be operated on. Um, so when we're looking at someone who is potentially a resection candidate, the first question that we ask is, is this liver going to tolerate this? Um, if you've got somebody with child's A cirrhosis, so good liver function, a platelet count over 100, which is a surrogate marker for portal hypertension, and a bilirubin of less than 1, which is basically normal, they generally are going to be able to tolerate liver resection depending on how much liver is going to need to be resected to get the cancer out. So after we decide, yes, this liver could potentially tolerate surgery, the patient's performance status obviously has, and other medical problems have to be able to tolerate surgery. Um, then we have the surgeons and, and we review it to look at how much liver are they gonna take out? And that is, location is everything. You know, if a, if a tumor is right in the middle of the right lobe of the liver, that's gonna be a lot harder to take out than something that's hanging off the edge of the left lobe. So those are sort of the criteria that we think about and look at when we're looking at is someone a resection candidate. The other thing that we have to think about is how many lesions are there. The more lesions that you have to resect doesn't necessarily mean resection is not an option, it just means that their risk of having disease recurrence is going to be a lot higher. So we generally shy away from resecting more than just one or two lesions just because we know the recurrence rate is more than 70% in those patients. Um, we are, there is a movement towards laparoscopic liver resection, which is great for the patient. It's a lot faster recovery, shorter length of stay. It does appear to give equivalent oncologic outcomes um, and, and less uh, blood transfusion requirements, um, which makes sense because a lot of these people do have, again, coagulopathy and portal hypertension that can increase the risk of bleeding. So those are things that we think about as far as the resection candidates. If a patient meets Milan criteria and is a resection candidate, what's the preference? So the Milan criteria, as you know, is, is the criteria that we make a decision as far as listing for liver transplant. So one lesion up to five centimeters or less than three lesions, all less than three centimeters. Um, no vascular invasion, no extra hepatic spread. However, one of the criteria that isn't often mentioned for liver transplant candidacy for liver cancer points is that they have to be non-resectable. So resection is always gonna be the preference if it's possible, um, partially because we don't want to expose someone to the immunosuppression of a liver transplant, but also because honestly, we just don't have enough livers to transplant everybody. So we need to really make our choices as far as who we're gonna transplant based on who's gonna benefit the most. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about the data related to adjuvant therapy after transplant? Uh, after, resection, after resection, I'm sorry. Sure, I, we actually, um, I participated in a study for, on, uh, the biggest study on adjuvant therapy that we have. It was called the STORM trial, and it randomized patients after resection or ablation with curative response to serafinib versus placebo, and they were, the plan was for them to take it for four years. The study actually was a negative study. It showed that um, using serafinib after resection did not result in any improvement in, in recurrence rates or survival. So that really um, showed us that exposing patients to the side effects of adjuvant treatment is really not gonna give them a good benefit. What do you think um, we should think about as far as recurrent disease? So after I send someone to resection, we scan them every three months for at least three years, um, and then usually every six months after that, because they remain at risk for liver cancer. But when I have somebody that's uh, got a recurrence in there, in their liver or extra hepatic, do we have, what are our options for those patients? So when I think about patients with recurrent liver cancer after resection or after transplant, the first consideration I have is, is there an option for local therapy if possible? Mm -hmm. um, if that's not an option, then the first line standard of care based on the SHARP study uh, is the use of serafinib. And serafinib is an oral tyrosine kinase inhibitor that uh, targets multiple pathways 
specifically the VEGF R pathway, and has been shown in a large uh, study of 602 patients randomized to uh, placebo versus serafinib to improve overall survival, which was the first randomized site to show an improvement in overall survival in advanced HCC. And I believe even some of those patients in that study were patients that had previously had a resection and now had recurrent disease. I don't recall the percentage, but I do believe that there were patients in there that met the criteria of that.